Last time I spoke a little about conspiracy theorists and this time I would like to tackle the subject of human extinction, a cheery subject. Um, it is something which I have been worried about for probably about 20 years or so. Um, and it's worth noting that 20 years ago I had a sort of ominous feeling that something terrible was going to happen in the world, whether it be a nuclear war or some kind of environmental catastrophe which would cause billions of people to die. Twenty years later, that hasn't happened. We're still here, thankfully. Um, and I've also, over that time period, grown to like humanity more than I did back then. I was very angsty teenager, um, not very content with life, um, certainly didn't want to have children, didn't want to bring children into the world. I was like that for a long time. Um, it wasn't until I was in my late thirties um, that I sort of changed my mind about that. And now, uh, at 42 years old, I have two children who mean the world to me. And I'm more concerned than ever, not that I wasn't before, but more concerned than ever that I do whatever I can to leave this world a better place than I found it. And so when I hear people like Guy McPherson um, talking apparently confidently about how there's no way humanity will still be going ten years from now, um, you know, I take note um, and I think he's being fairly alarmist and, and pessimistic um, because I think there are things we can do to improve the world um, quite drastically, quite quickly. Um, people do worry that it'll be too little too late, um, that there will be runaway climate change which will make large parts of the world uninhabitable through sea level rise and just generally high temperatures, massively increased forest fires, droughts, floods, landslides. All of these terrible things are happening and they're happening more and more. So it's we're, we're on a trend where we are heading towards uh, bigger and bigger disasters. Um, I certainly don't think we shouldn't be alarmed about that, but the idea that it's, um, you know, having been paying attention to this sort of thing for 20 years and nothing major has happened in that time, it's hard to imagine that 10 years from now that will be, or sooner than that, will be the actual point when things go horribly wrong. Um, so what can we do about it? I think we need to talk about taboo subjects much more openly, much more freely. Um, get rid of political correctness. And by that, um, it is sort of politically incorrect or unsociable or unacceptable to talk about overpopulation. Um, very few people do that, and when you when you do, as soon as you do, um, a lot of people leap down your throat and automatically assume that you're pro-genocide, um, pro-eugenics, pro-abortion. Um, obviously, I can't speak for everyone. There are antinatalists out there, and there are people who want humanity to go extinct, but um, I think those people are in a minority. And I like to think that um, quite a few thinking people agree with my line of thinking. Um, do tell me otherwise in the comment section below. Um, but yeah, so talking freely about um, the large, you know, the increasing population and linking that with basic understanding of ecology and the idea that 
we depend on the natural world for our survival. Uh, we are part of the food web, or the food chain, however you want to look at it. Um, we need plant life, or phytoplankton in the sea, to be eaten by other creatures, other organisms, um, and then we eat plants and animals ourselves. Um, we also need clean water to drink. And if the only variable you adjust is just to add more and more people into the mix, um, then almost every other problem gets worse. So uh, we need to seriously talk about population and I would, I'm not advocating any kind of mandatory, you know, you shall not have children, you cannot, it is forbidden, it is not allowed. Um, but I think the more people who are aware of the situation, the more will voluntarily decide not to have large families. Um, and I'm aware that having two children, and by the way, there aren't going to be any more, that's it. Um, I'm only just scraping under the replacement level of, um, I think it's 2.1 children per uh, female, keeps the population level, keeps the population stable. So I don't think I'm contributing to population growth um, or decline, I'm keeping it stable. But obviously there are many people who don't have children and if everyone who has children decided voluntarily to only have two, then the population would slowly start to decrease. Um, obviously it's a lot more complicated than that because the number of people alive today, especially young people, um, have got their whole lives ahead of them. They've got their lives to lead, so the population, whatever happens, will increase before it decreases. And it would be nice if there wasn't some horrendous catastrophe where billions of people died and that we don't wander blindly off a cliff and that we uh, make good decisions about um, how, to, how to move forward. Also, there is uh, the economy. Now, I'm no economist, um, but the precarious nature of the financial system, how easily it can be um, rocked and you know, enter a state of turmoil, as happened in 2008 and back in the 1930s, um, the whole borrowing money to, you know, basically living on credit, uh, which is what governments seem to have to do, um, seems to me pretty crazy. So I, and I don't have the solution for that, but I think it's something we need to talk about, and it's another thing we need to rethink. Uh, another thing which I think is very important is agriculture, growing our food. For 10,000 years, people have been ploughing the earth. And I think there are better ways to grow food which don't um, cost us our topsoil. Obviously, ploughing the earth, growing food on a semi... Uh, on a, not a small scale, a medium scale, um, that could well be perfectly sustainable. But um, feeding seven and a half billion people um, using artificial fertilizers, uh, as introduced halfway through the 20th century in what's been described as the Green Revolution, um, is definitely not sustainable. The amount of topsoil erosion um, and the, you know, when you plough the soil and it's exposed to sunlight, uh, the ultraviolet in the sunlight kills off um, some of the beneficial bacteria and microorganisms in the soil. So the soil becomes less fertile and then you need more artificial fertilisers to be able to grow the crops. Um, so, yeah, I think growing our food is something which, you know, there are large parts of the 
planet, which are desert or semi-desert, um, which could be used to grow food. And also, I think a lot of people, um, they, they, they like the idea of automation, and they think that, you know, working on the land, growing food on a small scale, um, is something that is really undesirable. Who would want to do that? But I beg to differ. I think a lot of people genuinely enjoy getting their hands dirty and growing their own food. And if more people were able to do that, a lot more people, and to be able to use marginal land um, using permaculture and agroforestry and other techniques, which are non-traditional or non, how would you say, um, intensive industrial agriculture. I think that's something we need to try to move away from, not stop it completely, obviously, because we still need to feed seven and a half billion people. But that's just one of many ideas I think we need to seriously discuss in the public forum. Anyway, I'm going to stop for now, and uh, I'll be interested to hear, to read responses to this in the comments section. And thank you for watching and see you next time.